Hey, hey, bitches. This is Elle, and welcome back to my channel. This week, we are going to be learning how to wood grain over a 3-in-1 paint primer adhesive. No more spray paint. I posted this as a short, and it zoomed. So, I figured, let's do a tutorial. I just want to thank everyone for the likes, subscribes, and shares. It is appreciated, and you will be able to find everything down below in the description box with a discount code to save along with other important links to find my facebook groups and all of my socials as well as my amazon storefront so let's get it all right bitches so i started out with a 12 ounce thick from maker flow craft there is my friend's affiliate link down below in the description box where you can find these tumblers. Now, this is a sublimation blank, but all you have to do is sand off that sublimation coating and then paint this how you want it. I am going in with Adhesive Apothecaries 3-in-1 Paint Primer and Adhesive. They're cauldron colors. This is the color Ghosted. It is a white. And I haven't seen anyone test alcohol inks or wood graining out on these, so that is what we did. This was a test. And I'm telling you, I've wood grained over 500 tumblers, and this was the best one yet. Like I said, these cauldron colors are a 3-in-1 paint primer adhesive. You can use them to apply glitter or base coat your tumblers. When they dry, they are no longer sticky. They are water-based as well. Just wanted to throw that out there so they are easy to clean up. Once this cauldron color dried, which I let it dry overnight... This tumbler felt just like I spray painted it with the flat spray paint. It was so soft. There was no streaking. It was perfect. Now let's speed it up and get to the wood grating. All right, so everybody does the wood grating process different. Like I've said, I've done a lot of these. Oh, I have had a lot of time to perfect these. I usually go in with five different brown inks, but this time we're using three. I always use Tim Holtz because I just like their brown inks. I have these listed in my Amazon storefront. And if you take a look, a lot of small businesses in the crafting world sell different alcohol inks. This is the brush I use. You can get it from the Dollar General, Dollar Tree. It is a one inch chip brush. So let's get it. I go in with Tim Holtz sepia first and i go all around the tumbler randomly with the sepia you're gonna see i squirt some on squirt a line i use a lot and then i start brushing back and forth starting at the top and coming around on the bottom the cool thing with alcohol inks you can't mess this shit up if you do you just add more ink and you start brushing. They dry super quick. The faster you brush, the faster they dry. I see people do these with wet and wild brushes, with paint brushes. This is the way that I have perfected them. So there are so many different ways to do this, but this is how I do it. Right smack dab in the middle of me teaching, I had to lay down a rag because this shit gets messy. I'm going to stop here in a minute and put on my glove and my apron. All right, let's start adding more sepia. Like I said, I want to get that darkest color all the way around the tumbler, leaving some bare spots, but sepia, that is my favorite, and we're going to get it all over. Once I get the sepia laid, I am going to go in with Tim Holtz Ginger, and I am just going to go in between where the sepia is, and we are going to start brushing doing the brush strokes back and forth, up and down. Like seriously, there is no right or wrong way to do this. You just gotta get in the groove, get in your groove. Even if it starts running, you are in control to catch it. And you can see from me brushing, you can see the brush strokes. I haven't washed this brush in a hot minute. I like it more dirty because you get more brush strokes. Once I get my ginger laid down, then I am going to go in with Tim Holtz Latte. It's a lighter brown, and we're going to do the same thing. I don't do knots or anything like that. I really like the way I do mine. They look realistic, so I just go with the flow. 
as you can see me putting the lighter color over the darker color, it will start to blend. And you can see like it blends. And there is the Ghosted by Adhesive Apothecary. That is what I used for my base coat. Now, the other two colors that I use is Tim Holtz Caramel. And sometimes I use teak wood. I don't really like the teak wood because it leaves like a green hue. And I just don't like that brown. So I am going to speed it up. This is literally 20 minutes long because I continue to go over and over and over again until I get it how I like it. But you will see me grab. I'm back to the sepia. It's all in how you want to lay them inks. So I'll see y'all soon. All right, I wanted to come back here and show how I do the butt. In the beginning, you saw me brush it down and go over the bottom. Well, now we're going to finish up the white spots. And I try to go the same way. I will brush down and then go over onto the tongue. If you do not catch that ink, it will pull and it will leave like puddles, I guess. That's what you want to call it. So make sure you go back around that tumbler and brush it down. You can always go back and fix it. That's what's so cool about these inks. But like I said, this was a test because I have never seen anyone use the cauldron colors before. And this worked amazing. I am so proud of this wood grain. Like I said, it is one of my best. The ink didn't sink. It, it just brushed on beautifully. So we're going to speed it up and get into epoxy. Right, so here it is all done I am proud of it I am not touching it anymore I am just checking to see if everything is pretty much even and I don't have any spots of ink you know bunched up anywhere I like it now some people will tell you to let this dry and seal it with your favorite sealer I do not seal my wood grains nope I do not I will let it dry for 24 hours. I have noticed when sealing my wood grains, it'll turn it green or it will smear. Dry for 24 hours and then we go in with first coats of epoxy. I mixed up 20 ml of epoxy and I put an even coat around this tumbler. I use DIY Epoxy Speedy Peedy and you can find that down below in the description box. Once this is dry and cured, we are going to finish this up. I only do one coat over my wood grains and follow your epoxy's directions. Once it is dry, I then go in with alcohol to wipe any residue off from me touching it before we go into finishing up this tumbler. I decided to go in with a UV DTF wrap, and this one I just thought would match the vibe perfectly. This cottage core booked theme UV DTF from Sweary Kim Tumblers and More was perfect. And this is the one that we decided to go with. Now, these wraps are usually for 16-ounce tumblers. But what's cool is you can chop these up. So, what you see me doing here is taking off some of the elements. We're going to get this wrapped using painter's tape to hold it securely in place. Remove the backing, cut it off, and press it down. We are going to slowly start removing the backing to get the UVDTF wrap onto the tumbler. Once we get it fully wrapped, then we will go in and remove that top carrier sheet. So we're going to speed this process up. Last week, I showed how to do this using this tumbler. So there's a video on this. I will have it tagged as a related video. Alright, this is what it looks like wrapped. And now we are going to seal this UVDTF wrap down. 
Usually I would go in with Adhesive Apothecary's Binding Potion, but this time we are going to use their Celestial Luster in the color Ethereal. I hope I pronounced that correctly, but I know I butchered it. What the Celestial Luster is, it is a sealer, which just like Binding Potion plus a shimmer. Do you see that shimmer? And we are going to brush that all over the tumbler. Look at that. So, I don't know about y'all, but I get sick and tired of mixing pigments and micas and shimmers in my epoxy. It's a mess. Literally, this handles the shimmer and seals it at the same time. So, I absolutely love these Celestial Lusters. I have several different colors. You can use these to seal your glitter or your decals. It adds that extra shimmer. I just keep brushing it until it starts to dry, and when it starts to dry, it gets sticky, and that lets me know to stop brushing, stick it to the side, and let it dry completely. Because once it's completely dry, you won't even know that you sealed the tumbler. You won't even know, but you will see that beautiful shimmer. Just look at it. It just adds the perfect touch, and I use these Celestial Lusters on everything. Here it is. I'm going to let it dry. Like I said, I think about 24 hours I let this one dry. Since moving in my whole hut, I've been having some issues with the humidity. So, I have been letting things dry a little bit longer. Once the sealer was dry, I had to run outside. Once that dries... I will then go in with two final coats of epoxy. I use Speedy PD Ultra UV. It'll be down below in the description box. Let it dry, and here it is completed. It is so pretty, and I want you guys to look at that shimmer that those celestial lusters give. It's just the perfect touch. But yeah, it's complete. That is how you wood grain. Using a 3-in-1 paint primer adhesive ditching spray paint. I really hope this helped. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And as always, do it scared and let's get it.